And good afternoon, this is Denny. Maayong hapon, Dagbayan General Santos. Ako ni si Shina and welcome to our program, Ang Alerto sa Pagtabang. We have a very unusual show today. We've been telling you this was coming. We're going to talk uh, premarital sex. Uh, and it's not what you think. Our, we are tied here with the Renell Rivera Foundation, part of their youth directors. We have some girls from the foundation here. We're going to introduce here in a few minutes. Our goal is to kind of discuss why does General Santo City have the highest birth rate for young people in the country? And uh, this is a difficult one for some of us. We've, uh, we're going to try to explore this. This will be kind of in the future an ongoing program. I told you we have coming up, we, have, we had this one coming today, which is the premarital sex, PMS as they say. We have uh, on the next week is going to come in as a discussion on social media. How has that changed our young people? And then we have peer pressure coming up the following week. So we have some interesting subjects, all kind of aimed at what's going on in the city, talking about our young people, seeing, uh, you know, trying to explore their ideas, talking to our counselors here to, and it's hard because we got we got two guys here that's going to try to uh, jump into this subject. And I got some girls here that are going to probably jump in and straighten some things out and give their opinion. So I hope this works good. We're, uh, Sheena here is going to try to keep track of all of this and keep it in perspective. So here goes. Let me first start. Uh, I'm going to let Sheena introduce the girls. And, and we, we also have an audience here, but we have two girls that, from the uh, Heart Foundation here next to the radio. So they're going to be involved. So why don't you do an introduction, Sheena? Okay, so exciting yun kaayo ang ato ang topic karon no? Very in line kaayo sa ato ang gina-celebrate every month of February. So ato ang mga special guest from the Heart Foundation, Miss Carla May Gauran, welcome, and Karen Jane Kinyo, welcome. There is ato ang programa. And from our guys, and guys I'm going to say, you have a tough job today. You... Your boss told me that you are the experts. <laughs> it puts the pressure on you. I'm just going to plain ig I'm just going to claim ignorance and let you guys be the expert and the girls be the experts today. Let me have each one of you introduce yourself and talk about what your position is and what you do with the youth of Jensen. Well, uh, hi, hi, no sa baintisays ka barangay sa atong ciudad. Kining uh, tingog ngayong nadungog, kini si Gilbert Lim, no, as uh, Kuya Lim sa Jensen. Well, uh, isa ko ka community organizer sa Ronel Cervera Foundation. Then, uh, very uh, ano, broad kayo nga ito ang uh, uh, kaning natawag na ito ng scope sa mga trabaho. But, um, we are very happy, of course, mga maservisuhan na mabod ang uh, kabatanunan. Well, uh, sa foundation, sa mong uh, field, sa mong trabaho, well, taghan mo yung mga i-offer, no? ang RCR Foundation, uh, nag-offer o uh, taghan ka yung mga activities intended no, para sa youth, para ma-empower nato sila. Okay, may hapon sa nanan. Ako po si Amado Kalagaan Jr. Uh, usap po ka community organizer sa Ronald Cervera Foundation. So, sama sa yung ni Kuya Lim, uh, isa sa mga... Uh, ang among ginatabangan o ang among advokasiya mao ang mga batanon. So, karoon natin mga isgutan nga uh, sa masagingon ni Sir Dinning ang premarital sex kay karong wala na ito mag ang adlaw sa pagminahalay o yes. adla bulan sa paghigugma. Okay, guys, this is I, I, I feel I feel very uh, excited for you. <laughs> what we're going to try to do, and, and let me let me go back just a little bit. We, I uh, I have worked with the Renell Rivera Foundation for many years, uh, even going back as I, I knew I knew the mayor before he was mayor. We have during his first term, we worked in doing a lot of the medical 
programs together. We used to ship cataract patients back and forth uh, to Tacarone. We have continued in our friendship and our working relationship, certainly working with Brian, uh, with these guys here and all the foundation. So it's been kind of a one of those things together we can do more and we can do it better and this is this is part of what we're kind of aiming at here our programs which also kind of intertie with our vitamin program we're working it ties into our EMS some of the audience here has been involved in our EMS training program what we will discuss and do with our little pieces and parts of the drug rehab and part of what we will talk today, there is a kind of a large connection here that that points to attitude changes, cultural changes, uh, city changes even, country changes, all of what we see going on around the world. We, I call it the good, bad, and the ugly. It's a mixture of, of some good. There's, I know technology has brought some great things. Uh, there's some bad and there's some ugly that's mixed in. We're going to try. We're going to say, you know, what about God? What about where are we spiritually in in this change? And it's a it's a it's a generation change. And I've seen this as one of our past shows here. The last few days, we started talking, uh, building up to this thing, and we talked about changes in my culture in the United States, how we went from hippies to free love to drugs, and uh, how the United States is kind of like a step in the future. It seems like the Western world, unfortunately, leads the way, and then the other countries in the world kind of follow. So whatever good or bad or ugly, you know, we're starting to see these things happen now in this country. So. These guys, <clears throat> uh, their challenge today is to talk about it and see between the guys and the girls, can we <laughs> come up with a solution? And the girls seem excited. Yeah, the guys, <laughs> and let me, let me set this up for you out there. The guys are sitting here looking scared, and the girls, they're ready to go. Right? <laughs> and, and Sheena, Sheena's going to jump in here, and she's going to, since I'm not going to understand everything that's said, she's going to try to referee. So this is this is like, I don't know if this is going to be a battle of the sexes or if this is going to be just a good old education. This is what I think. So you guys get to start it off. Why don't you, why don't you tell me, and I know you have a lot of notes there, tell me where you're going with this. Okay, Kuya Sokuta. Kuya Gilbert, um sa man nang imuang maingon ani ka nang maingon tag premarital sex sa imong pagsabot unsa may atong unsa may nimuang nakatunan kung maingon tag premarital sex oh no uh, isa sa tong uh, nindot kay nga uh, discussion karon but anyway uh, wala pa taka testing ana ha uh, but uh, pinaka nindot is uh, mabalang ginato kung uh, unsa ano siya pagiwas kung uh -huh. sabay mangayon din ani Anyway, ang premarital sex, ah, uh, ang uh, uh, nasabta ni Ini, it is si activity, you know, uh, sa both partner, babae, lalaki, nga outside marriage pa. So, muna, no, muna ang kanagyataw nga to nga premarital sex. So, sa kinatibukan, uh, di, di na tapoy di masulod sa ginatawag na nga sex kung mayingon ta nga wala pa ta na minyo. Diba? Tinatama man? Mm, tinood, okay, tinood, so, tinood na. na siya. Kaya sa gingon pa sa, sa, ano, uh, sa gingon pa nga, ang kanil ginatawag na itong sex, usan ni siya kagasa sa Diyos. Yes, na, sacred. Na, sacred. No? No? sacred. Sagrado yes. ni siya na nagigasa sa sa Diyos para ka na ito. Kundi in, uh, himuon lang na ito ni siya ng aktividad kung nanata sa sulod sa kami niyon. Tama, tama. tama. Okay. okay, so... Yes, so tama gina ang idea sa tawag mga kuya na naadiri ka ron, no? And they are very, kumbaga, well-informed. And ingon gani ni Kuya Lim na even he himself admit na dili pagid siya nag-engage sa ani na, na pagbuhat. Ang premarital sex, to clear it out, 
premarital sex is kanang pag-engage sa sexual activity sa isa ka tao, isa ka babae o lalaki na wala pa sila sa boundary sa marriage. And sa to ang mga guest, according to them, dili good ni siya pwede na activity na himuon. But well, sadly, um daghan man ang mga youth ang na, na kubaga na hulog or na fall sa ani na activity ba. And I will ask the can I ask the ladies about your observations sa society since mao ang gi-share sa tong kuya is about the ideals of course ang ideal na activity or kumbaga na himuon sa isa ka youth no na dili dapat siya mag-engage sa PMS but sa ato ang mga guests diri karon na mga ate na mga girls unsa inyo ang mga observation sa society na to karon sa mga youth na to karon Okay, thinking about the plan of God and the idea or what God wants for us to do, we can say that it's really wrong for the youth for today to engage in that kind of activity. Because God really wants us, I mean, God... Okay, tama no. Um dili gyud kumbaga even the Lord himself dili gyud na niya gusto kumbaga dili na niya gi-command. Wala gyud na siya sa command sa Ginoo na youth pa lang ta kanang mag-engage na ta sa anak na butang. Okay, balik tayo sa ating mga kuya dito. Sa inyo mga observations mga kuya. Unsa ang nakita ninyo sa society na to karon? Ang mga actions, ang mga kumbaga ang obvious ba? And how about the rate? Unsa sa tingin ninyo, asa na unsang stage or unsang edad nagastart na ba ang curiosity sa isa ka teenage or bata sa pag-engage sa ani na pag nabuluhaton? Um, sa atong mga napan, sa atong napansin karon din sa atong community, especially din sa Jensen, um, siguro mga 12 years old ang ubang mga bata na engaged na sa ingani nga ako an uh, ano ba nang kanang tungod sa pagiging um, curious sila sa mga ingani nga butang uh, kundi in orag siguro daghan tag mga i-consider nga mga process na nganong ingani na yung tabo nganong nga bata pa kayo nganong na engaged na sa premarital sex Okay, Sir Nani, according to them, it's all about the curiosity. I've asked them about how 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 old will the child or a youth starts to getting involved in this kind of action, the premarital sex. So the their answer is about the curiosity. Would you agree with that? Well, I will say I've done a lot of research here. We've we've gone in and we're seeing and we're seeing young people even at the age of uh, 12, 13, that's, uh, that having babies already. This is, uh, this is not certainly in other parts of the world. Sometimes this is uh, young girls are married at that age. So it's a cultural thing in a way. What we had here, you know, what does God think about this? That is, that is, well, that's the guidelines. That's the, you know, our commandments, our direction, our the morals of the country. Each country stands on different morals. So this activity that we see is way too young. It's, uh, I guess we get down to curiosity. Well, what created the curiosity? What, what made people curious about this? Uh, we can maybe say, go back to what we see on TV, what we see in movies. And that's what we've got to figure out. How do we get past these these issues, and I call it good, bad, and ugly. That's the only way I've been able to do it. And I, I have to say, say we have to separate that good and the bad and the ugly and put it in a separate pile, and learn to not touch it, and not to not to mingle with it. So, so you're right. And I I think uh, I don't know. I guess it's it's a whole cultural change, and it's it's many. You know, I'm many generations past that. It was different when I grew up. This this wasn't, you know, there was problems, but this thing in school, 
and we talked about even our TV programs that when we had a TV program that the married couple had separate beds in the bedroom. That's how clean our programs were. And even the stuff they allow on TV now is a oh, hundred times past that. Uh, we were working some technical difficulties a while ago. I don't know if you girls finished, but why don't you jump back in if you want to. Where do you, what do you think about uh, the discussion we were talking about the age? The age is way, well, it's premarital sex to start with, which is, which is wrong, but we're seeing, maybe it's, do you think it's just being curious, or is it more than that? I guess it's more than curiosity. I guess um, children or the youth did it because of a broken family or a separated parents, which causes them to do that thing because there's no one to advise them, to guide them to where they are going. And maybe that's one of the factors why premarital sex exists. Is it an affection thing? Are they, since, and you mentioned broken families, which there's a lot of problems and lack of affection, do you think they're reaching out for affection? <laughs> affection, like, uh, reaching out. well, reaching out. Do, do you think the young people, now, when I, and I'll explain it better, within the family, you know, you have a lot of love in the family. When a family is right. dysfunctional mm -hmm. and right. not working right, do you think that, the children or the young people are reaching out for love Outside. from others. Yes, the I guess because a person can really be disturbed by his emotions and sometimes maybe that youth is asking or finding love to other person because the love from his family <laughs> or his parents isn't available. That's why he's going into something to find love, but then he's not finding a true love because embarking or engaging himself into a premarital sex is, I guess, never a true love. Because when you say true love, you can wait for it because true yes. love waits. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's more of a lust. And it's more of an adventure or just being curious. Okay, who has something to add to that? Well, um, speaking of curiosity, I don't know if I misunderstand the word. In terms of being curious, it's not a word for us to learn. But if you're curious about one of the things that is not for us, that's the big thing. I don't know if it's a word Saka na bang maka-apekto sa ito ah? Okay, tama yun, no? Na because of our curiosity yun and even ang family situation. But then, even the Bible said na kanang everything, everything is kumbaga permissible. Tanang bagay, pwede ni mong himuon. But not everything is beneficial. So, naagay mga butang, kanang curiosity about sexual activity, part yun na siya as a human being. Even ang mga bata, yun, naagid na yung curiosity. Lalo na ang youth, kaya nagapangita yun na siya o affection. And so, therefore, we can conclude that normal sa tao ang curiosity. But then, because of our curiosity, sometimes, of course, we may fall back. Kung wala tayo proper guidance from the family, mauna siya, the curiosity and the family, kung wala proper guidance from the family, na agay da kung tendency ang bata or ang youth na ma-fall into wrong direction. And that's why ma-engage siya sa premarital sex. Now, let's, let's go to the today, okay? One of the hottest topic or one of the hottest um showing on the cinema is kaning Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> oh, diba? Ito, current, very current ito. Are you <laughs> agree? Yeah. Will you agree with this kind of kumbaga, movie na ginapakita or how about the media? 
Okay, unsa ang effect ani sa youth? Okay, we have talked about curiosity, we have talked about the family. Now we're actually we're talking about the factors kung ano nag-engage ang mga youth sa premarital sex. Now we're be talking about the media. How what can you say about the effects of media connecting sa premarital sex? So, ang media, atako yun siya o kanang kalabutan, no? Kay may makonsider gina to nga isa sa sa mga dako nga nga kalabutan nga kundi in ma-engage to sa ganyang ginatawag ng premarital sex. Siguro sa napoy uban nga kahit sungod sa madungog o makita sa mga bata sa television nga kanang kulang o guidance gikan sa mga ginikanan. No? Isa po na siya nga dapat po na itong i-consider nga ginanglan kung tanaw to o ganang ipatanaw na to atong mga anak o ganing ganang mga palabas o may to sa mga radio nga ako Mawagay na nga itong mga kawan, wala po nagkulang ang itong minatawag nga NTRCB kay nasa ginatawag nga kanyang salidahan ni nga para gini siya sa kawan, kanyang EA, rated PG, SPG, o di ba natin mga ganang ginakawan nga para guided ta nga kawan. Pero siguro, ang, kula, ang isa po na itong makonsider nga kawan, kulang po siguro ang kawan sa mga ginikanan. Hmm. Ang guide, guide nila sa itong mga anak nga, kundi yun mauna nga, kanyang nakita, na nakita nila sa TV, mo po ginahimo nila, labi na kanyang mga kuha niya, dilit nyo nila may explain mayo. Well, let me, uh, you know, I, I sit back and I look at, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm older and uh, supposed to be wiser and means I've had more experience and I've learned more and I can just tell you guys just say no. <laughs> Because this leads into a lot of, this leads, there's a lot of times I think back through my life and I wish I'd have done things differently. Uh, even even the high abortion rate in the United States, I know a lot of the women that has, uh, you know, they're in this situation uh, to need an abortion or want an abortion because of premarital sex. So it, it, it can change your life. It can put you in trouble because, because the moment you don't make always good decisions so you need to have this within your heart within your thinking before you get there and part of what we're going to discuss today is you know it seems like we've got away from God God gave us uh, he gave us a lot of wisdom and I we talked about this on a program the other day and I I asked I said what do you do when you get a new car well you you get a and you don't know how to work everything so you get your shop manual out and it's a car manual that comes with the car and you turn to the right page and it tells you how to turn your wipers on and off well the word of god the bible is our manual if we you know and when you're born and you get slapped they ought to be slapping you with that book on your on your backside because if we was to read our manual we wouldn't be making all these mistakes because it it sets us up, it shows us what happened in the Bible, it shows us history, it shows us what you should do, what you should not do, and when we, and I, I don't care, every time, every time in my life that I strayed from that, I was sorry. And so when I tell, you know, guys, don't do it, just don't do it. Uh, girls, you know, your life changes. You're, you're at a young age, you mess your education up, uh, life as you once knew it, when you get, when you have a baby, is it's no more. Your life has changed, and you know this. The guys go out and have a good time. You're you're tied down with a baby. You're you're not able to go to school. You're, it just changes everything. It takes everything away from you. So why? How, how can we get to here to where you can make this mistake? What is missing? You know, there must. For our young girls and, and, and boys to do this, and it's not wise, it, it many, many times has, I'm not saying a baby is, is a bad result, but I'm saying the actions of, of not being married, not having the ability to work together to raise that child, that leaves you, it leaves some bad outcomes. So when you, and I guess we're trying to figure out well, how do we fix this? And just by saying "Don't do it," it's not going to fix it. There's got to be something inside, and that, to me, as as the older generation looking back on my 
on my life, looking back at what I see now, because I'm working counseling and trying to fix things and make things better every day. That's what I do. So I look at this. I see all the young girls with their whole future ahead of them. They, they don't think. And the guys aren't thinking because the guys, well, they kind of think on a different level. But you girls have to think of what happens. And, and most girls are oh, they're kind of excited to have a baby. I don't know if that sticks after a few months of getting up all night and changing diapers and, and no sleep and, and you're watching your boyfriend run around and have a good time. I'm thinking that you're not too happy. What do you think, girls? Uh, what, what, what is your opinion on that? I mean, is it fair? <laughs> it isn't fair. <laughs> okay, what do you usually lose? What, what do you lose? Okay, kay naman tayo mga guests diri yun na lalaki o mga babae. Unsa bag yun di ay? Kay, dili mang good ta. Tama gud ang idea ni Sir Danny. Dili enough na mag-ingon ta diri sa radyo na, no, don't do that. Pero in reality, Girls, voice out. Unsa ba ang mawala sa isa ka babae pag nag-engage siya sa premarital sex? Sa inyo ha, boys. Unsa ba ang mawala sa inyo ha? Okay. Let's hear it from the girls' side. Ladies first. Okay. Ladies first. Sige. Uh, for me, no? Siyempre, as babae, ang first good na mawala sa inyo is, siyempre, yung virginity, yung... And for me ha, kung mag-engage ka sa premarital sex, imong dignity mawala po. So dapat, remember na our body is a temple of God jud siya. So, a temple of Holy Spirit, temple of God, anak. So nga nung imuha man ang ihatag kung di, wala pa kay blessings gikan sa Ginoo. Yeah. Di ba? So, love when it's your season na jud. Magmahal ka kung season mo na. Learn how to wait jud. And enjoy your season as a single jud siya. Oh, I can say amen to that. Yeah. Uh, certainly. Amen. amen. And and that is something that we, we talk about the body being the temple of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. of God. We talk about that in all things. We go back into our <coughs> drug issues, our alcohol issues. And so very, very wise. A very wise understanding. And that is what is missing. Okay? That mm -hmm. I said something's missing with the with the youth and I guess the next step is, now you guys work with the youth all the time. Do we have the church involvement by our young people? Are they close to God now? Um, sa karun, um, medyo napansin na itong uh, orag na yun, no? Na... Well, in reality, in reality, magkita mag mo sa plaza, sa mga streets, no dahil kay mga kandin ha, dahil kay mga lovers, na simply close kayo about mga fifteen year old, sixteen year old, naga holding hands, wow, nilut kesa talawan. But ang reality ana, kanang may nung banato nga ang church, no, layo ba sila sa inana? Well, siguro some of them, bicho matawag nato nga layo gitcha. But I'd like to extend, no, extend ako ang discussion. Now everything has a, a right time, no? Uh, even Jesus Christ ni abot sa kalibutan, right time na siya nga gihatag sa God sa iya, sa ating uh, Diyos Ama, no? And then, having a partner, uh, medyo dako kayo na siya na discussion because uh, having a partner, ano na siya, no? Kanang, it's a higher form of being a human. No, dako kayo na siya nga, kwan, responsibilities, lots of responsibilities, complexities, ang dami, and dyan. Then, di ba sa bastas, mga naminan itong mga kabataan din at mga youth na nagbita nagkamot ka ron? <laughs> Oo. Yeah, uh, it's a time no, to think. Uh, Ingnan na imuhang katupa din ha. Tinuod ba dyan ni? Oh? Pagnana ba? <laughs> so, siguro, it has uh, twist the mind. It has twist the mind. It has to think. Uh, Kana bang ang pagtanong nato sa babae, dili siya isa kadulaan. Isa ni siya ka-value, isa ni siya ka-gasa sa gino sa tua nga ato asyang ampingan no ampingan irespeto of course kinang ato ipakita nga doon ang itawag nga self value yes and and, and self value that's one of the ingredients that's missing because and i want to give you an example we we talked about this the other day there were some young people out in front of my house 
and they made the mistake of saying, hey, Joe. <laughs> well, when somebody says, hey, Joe, to me, they got to talk to me, okay? So here I come out the gate. They were getting kind of scared. I said, ah, oh, hello. I said, I always, when somebody says, hey, Joe, I always say hello. And, and I went out because, and these were young kids. They were 14, 15, and they were smoking. So immediately they got my smoking lecture, and I said, oh, I said, I deal with people every day that's sick from smoking. Their lungs are messed up. And we started talking. Their English was pretty good. And next thing I know, the guys are trying to sell me the young girl. Okay, they're absolutely, the girl couldn't have been 13 or 14 in there. I said, oh, you want to buy this girl? I said, guys, and I, now the girls didn't have much English. I, cause I said, girls, you got, you're not, you're not going to let these guys talk like that. But that is the that is the attitude, and these are this is probably a different group. They they were probably skipping, and they probably weren't going to school. They're running around at night, and what we would call in the United States is small gangs, and maybe that is, maybe that's how I think you have a name for that. But it's groups of young kids out running the streets at night, and this was the beginning of, in the United States of our gangs that stick together. There's no morals. They're using drugs. They're so. We're seeing that in Jensen now. In 2006 when I was here, now you were still having bombings back then, and uh, it seems like when it got dark, the city shut down. Yeah. You don't see that now. I can go, I took somebody to the bus station one, three o'clock in the morning, and I had hundreds of young people uh, gathering in this one place. They're screaming, making noise. If, there's, if the drug issue was, was going on, it was there. To me, in even the last years, attitude has changed. To me, I see the ingredients missing, the self, the self-worth, the self-value. I see the missing piece of the Holy Spirit within, within people to understand that they are to glorify God with their body. So that's, that's two big important ingredients that we hit right there, and that's Satan, who has come to kill, steal, and destroy, I think he takes away our self-worth, our value. He shows us if there's no God, then we must not be any more valuable than anything else, and not much more than an animal. Okay? So God, uh, God has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Satan has come to kill, steal, and destroy God's people. So I think he takes our self-worth away. I think we've hit one point. I think our not understanding that God has a place for us, that we're very valuable, that a tremendous price was paid for our salvation. I think if, if the devil can get rid of that and chase, and, and there's a saying, you know, we, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, but that Holy Spirit cannot live inside of you if he has to share the house with Satan. So Satan knows that too. So I guess the question is, that's, that's two points. Is there anything else? Those were two very good points. What else? Uh, and I think we talked a little about, about movies, about TV. And, and I, don't, I don't see any, I don't, I don't even know when. I, I, watched, uh, I watched a movie the other day, it's The Space Between Us. Now that was pretty good. That was clean and... You know, it, 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 had, it had young people dealing with serious, real issues. You don't see those kind of movies anymore. So what else? Anybody have any other ideas? What, what, other, what are we missing or what is coming against us? Uh, I, think we, I think we hit it pretty. I think we hit it pretty much. Uh, it all has to do with what I keep saying, and this applies to everybody around the world. It's what is inside. Okay, it's what, what do we reach out for, what do we take inside of us. And if we have God inside with us, we're very powerful. Okay, what most of you out there that's listening now, and, and we're going to, we'll talk Christians, and there's, there's people who says they're Christians, and then there's true Christians who, who study the Word every day, they study to show their self worthy, they, you know, they, they have the Spirit of God in, in them that speaks to them when need be, when it says, oh, don't do that. We learn to 
decide and understand when we hear God's voice and when we hear the devil trying to tempt you and push you into stuff and then if your Holy Spirit is there with you you have God speaking to you don't do it <laughs> so I think it boils down to it that I see and this is me kind of looking down and not knowing not knowing much about anything but yet knowing enough to see that our people has drifted away from God. Now let me go back to add to that. I think you, I think you as the Philippines, this country is closer to God than any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think there's there's scripture for that about the country that can come back to God, and He says, "I will come in and heal your land." Well, I don't think that's the United States. The United States used to be the most closest country to God. Uh, you're seeing what's if you're watching the news you're seeing the whole world collapse right now you're seeing you know Obama came into my country when he was elected two terms ago and says we're no longer a Christian nation and right after he said that we started proving we weren't because it got worse and worse and worse to where it's almost destroyed the country and it's still possible that the United States may not make it and why because we got away from God so if I look back, if I was, you know, when we speak to young people now, I say, you know, I ask them, I said, do you have your power? Because there's power within God. The armor of God is super power. And, and we're talking armor of God, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. The boots always, with this armor, always being prepared to give the good news and speak the word of God. If you're walking around with that shield, you're stopping the devil. If your bright, if your breastplate from righteous is nice and shiny, these things stay away from you. If you can swing that sword of the spirit in the name of Jesus, you can knock Satan down. You can stop him. Without that, in this day and age, we don't have a chance. And that's what I would tell our young people. I would say, put on the full armor of God. Is that even is that even thought about anymore? Is our, our, is our church teaching this? Is our church talking about end times and trying to get people prepared? I'm not hearing it. Are you all hearing it in church? Are we, are we talking end times anywhere in church? Are we talking about, you know, make ready? Yes, of course. And all of our churches are actually making every activity everything that they can do just to gather all this young people around to be informed to be well taught by the scriptures no daghan gid kaayg mga simbahan karon ang naga himo gyud og pamaagi para gyud i-catch ang ato ang mga young people because one of the reasons why daghan kaayg mga mis mislead na mga young people is because most sa ilahang madunggan manggod na mga kumbaga mga maka-influence sa ilaha is kung unsa ang giingon sa society. We all know na dako gyud kaayo ang difference sa ginatudlo sa society sa ginatudlo ni Lord. Di ba? Dili na to na ma-deny. Unsa ba ang ginatudlo ni Lord in his in his word? Ingon niya na na the the sexual activity is bound in marriage. Pero unsa ang ginaingon karon sa sa society? As long as you love the person, you will surrender everything. And that's the reason why daghan kayo gina nag young people na mag-engage og og sex, de ba? Daghan kayo mag ma, ma kumbaga daghan kayo ang mo surrender anak ba? Very common example, mo ingon ang isa ka lalaki. Sige daw be, kung ginahigugma ko ni mo be. Ihatag ang tanan. Ihatag ang tanan. <laughs> na. February 14 ba ya karon basig daghan kayo ang mga bataan ang mo surrender. So Ang tinuod mang good na love and tinuod na love is dili man na makita sa tao. Will you agree with that our guest, special guest? Oh, makita mo mommy. Yes. yes. Oh, yes, kaayo no. Ang real love is dili na siya makita sa tao. Real love can only exist sa sa, sa Ginoo. Ang tao mang good ma-fail gyud ta. But then our Ang society magod iba ang voices ba na ginaingon. So, kamo, unsa ba ang 
unsa ba ang way para kani kay daghan mag um once a young person misleaded, misguided, walay walay church um walay church na kanang kumbaga involvement tapos na engage siya okay na engage siya sa premarital sex what will be the result sa ana sa person na unsa gyud ang mga result ani sa person ni sige nga let me hear it from you well ah uh, kana siya nga ko ano kana siya nga situation It's very ano siya very bold okay syempre ikaw maka engage na sa premarital sex Duha ra yung padulungan na na no. Maaring ma mabuntisan nimo ang imuhang partner. Pwede pog dili. But sa kadaghanan nga nahitabo is naadyo yung natawag nga resulta. Kung medical ang aspeto nga atong tan-awon tinha, no, base sa tong mga natun-an sa eskwelahan no. Ang isa ka babae nga nag-engage pa og uh, nag-engage na sa sa kanaang nga klase nga activity. So, mas prone sila sa ginatawag na ito mga cervical cancer, mga, no? Tagan siya, no? Tagan kayo ka ng pwedeng, no? Mas sa medical nga part, nga part. Then, sa economic naman, siyempre, you are at the very young age, then, asa mo ka makapangit ang trabaho, ano, nga, para ibuhay sa'yo mga anak. Mas nila, no? Ah, uh, uh, litas imagine, litas imagine, no? Kana siya nga butang. In a way, ang, ang tao manggod sa visual na siya, no? Uh, isa ka word ginatanaw nila gina imagine nilang isa ka word nga mao na karon let us use this uh, skill kung visual ta tanaw na to karon tanaw na to ang ato ang kaugmaon no ikaw karon nga babae no lalaki s'yempre dili lang babae pasing ila na to ani of course kasali ang lalaki ani eh. nga naman ma mabuhi ma mahitabo ko din lang mabunti sa babae kung wala lalaki so dapat dalawa no duha ang ato ang pwedeng i-convince ani tas convince mga naminaw karon yung mga young people, mga nanay, no, mga tatay, mga lolo nga cross no kamo ang amo ang tinatan-aw na himong sumbanan sa kapataan karon. So atong tan-aw siya visually kung sa bay mahimong resulta. Pinakadako gina no mag-add lang ta og problema sa Pilipinas mo na pinaka simple jud. Add og problema taas ka ayo ang population, pagtaas ang population, ha sa tama moyo. So grabe no mag lang sa mga slums area. Well, no, wala na ito na ginadegrade nung mga tao. Well, uh, ditas, no, ditas, imagine, no, itong tanawon yun. Nga, kana ang tanan, nanindot kayo, kilig-kilig yung tanang gugma, pero, ang resulta, hastang dakuwa. No, ang responsibility by having a partner, dili na siya joke, dili na siya dula-dula lang ka o tarak-tarak, wala lang na siya kakaon, kagmamun, Ang humani mo gaon, pwede rin pilawan gamay niya, dilin, labay. So, dilin na na. Reality ang itong ginatanaman ni pag, pag mo engage tayo ng klase ng butang. Yes, that's so true. Dako, good. O mga, kumbaga, dako, o effect ba sa isa ka babae o isa ka lalaki kung mag-engage nila sa premarital sex. And karon, let's talk about um spiritually. Because... Sa mga girls, kanihan na mention nila, it, our girls here is kind of more, more of spiritual ano ba, aspect ang ilahang makita. Spiritually, unsa ang magiging result sa isa ka babae na talagang naging victim na yun siya, kumbaga na ang prutas, anay consequence, ang premarital sex activity na iyahang ginahimo sa inyo ha, unsa ang observation ninyo. Well, you girls... You, we, we kind of count on you all as seeing it one way. Us guys, uh, we we have an understanding, but having having the girls to explain. Do you have any ideas? The church, kung ay magmabuntisan sa church, kung sa ang magiging resulta na. Okay. Uh, sa karon mga gudlo, uh, makita na ko sa mga uh, teenagers, magsigi sila ng na follow your heart daw, follow your heart. Always remember na naas sa Bible na guard your heart above all else, Jude. Kay sometimes ang atong heart deceive mga gud, nag deceive mga siya. So karon, um, sa ako ang observation no, upat lantaw na ko sa mga babae na nabuntisan sa church, anak. So syempre, nai uban na may na it's a blessing 
So it's from God and I'm good. So wala na tayong buhat kung naanig dito. Ang ato na lang buhat kung as a uh, kamem, uh, sisters in Christ is to accept them kung sa ilang pagkamali. Kasi um, kita man yung tanan is ka ng magkamali mang yun. Dili lang sa ato ang actions, atong words. Pero, pero pati na po sa ato ang thoughts. Every day yun na siya. Mga ganina na, ang, the grace of God is always there para anang, ano good? Um, the grace of God is always there para sa Uh, to, restore. Oh, ma-restore ta, Anna. So, ato. Let me see. We have about 15 minutes left. We're going to... I, I think we need to jump in just a little bit. Uh, I, I made a comment earlier at the beginning of the show. Here in General Santos City, we seem to have something that's different. I can, I can go through this city and I see a lot of 666 markings. I see a lot of our young people with satanic hand signs. I can go to other cities and I don't always see that. And I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if it's just a sales promotion here on some products. But when I when I look at the crime, when I look at, when I have PNP ask me about doing a some kind of a rape assistance class, when I when I start and, and I know, I used to work the streets in the United States, and only about 10% of what I would come across and do on a, on a, and this is talking about violent crimes, only 10% ever ended up in the paper. And we know that here in this city, there's still a lot of things that go on that we all don't know about. And if I'm coming up on a percentage that I come up on, I know there's a lot more. One thing that I noticed, and I need kind of all the pastors to pay attention to this, and I'm, I'm going to hold some of this stuff up because as we, as we do the program and put it up on YouTube, we're going to tie in some of these charts. This is, uh, this is marking, and you can go on and not everybody agrees with this, but this is a marking of 666, and this is one of the energy drinks that I won't, I won't mention the name on the radio, but... It has in the Hebrew language, it says 666. And I see this on motorcycles, hats, on shirts. I see even pastor's children wearing this. Now, I said to a man once, I said, Oh, you have 666 on your seat. Aren't you afraid? I said, I would be afraid. I don't even want to park next to you. He said, Well, <laughs> he said, Well, it was like that when I bought it. So it's no big deal. Uh, then one day I seen a motorcycle flipped on its side in the road 666 and I, uh, I kind of said, yeah, I told you so. Okay, we could say that's true. We can say that, well, we don't, we don't believe that. We don't really think that. But what I'm saying, in this day and age, I think everything matters. I think that there is an attack on God's people because we teach as as part of my teaching in times, we teach that we are the end of the end times and that in the Christian view, Christ is soon to return. So with that, I, I consider that a small part to be concerned about. I see well, we have more things going on in Gen Sun. Can this be related? Now with the young people, I was trying to do some promotion stuff, and I took a lot of pictures of the young people, and I go back and say, guys, I can't use any of those pictures, because you had, and I'm holding up now kind of a picture of the devil with this satanic hand sign, which is directly out of the satanic Bible. And what I find disturbing about this is all of the evil world leaders do that same sign. You see some of our top Hollywood people with, and I'm showing another picture that, that shows some anarchy signs carved into the hand, all showing this one hand signal. Uh, but I can take this with some of our world leaders that we suspect as being part of the New World Order. I'm holding up George Bush and one of the past Iranian presidents, all holding up this satanic hand sign. It's like this secret sign around the world. Okay, so when we talk about influence, I don't even know people who do this, I don't even always know that they understand what they're doing. Sometimes they're copying. 
Does that matter? I think so, because it's ungodly. <coughs> you know, there was, during, during our elections, we had some of the chants that the crowd would give, and, and, and there's, there's satanic groups in the United States right now. That's the reason I worry about the Philippines. They are actually satanic groups that has a satanic statue of Satan in some of the cities. And they, and they was doing some chants, and they played it backwards, and it says, Hail Satan, Hail Satan, in some of the chanting. We go in, and they, they do cultural things of just ugly proportion. They, they take the statue of Christ. We, I have some of them here, if I can find it while I'm talking. So we have, we have real things that happens that are pretty much mocking the Bible in the United States, pretty much just, just outright blasphemy in some areas. We have movements in the United States, you know, what is, <laughs> and I'm holding up a couple of guys dressed like, I don't know what, it's very dressed bad. What, what, is that, what does that promote for morals? Now you have some of this stuff going on in Manila, but what, imagine this, what our young, what our, let's forget, young people are supposed to be in an age they can discern, but what's our children, what's our children thinking about that? Hmm? How is it affecting them? How is it, how is it changing the way we think? How is it redirecting our thoughts and, and making it all appear to where, oh, everything's probably okay, no problem. Well, I tell you, in our schools in America, our teacher can be fired for having a cross on. She can be fired for doing anything that has to do with, with teaching about God. And you know what? Our kids are ending up like this. <laughs> they are seeing the adults do it, and they believe that to act like this is normal. Okay? This is what's happening to us here. We are seeing through our videos, our movies, we're seeing that eh, little craziness can be fun. Now, what good is society is that little boy going to be in the future? Okay? If he's, he is not born this way, he is being developed that way. Philippine people, I see you have great blessings that should be here in this country. And we're almost out of time, and I'm going to try to give everybody a little time for the final word. My final word is, you know, wait for marriage. My final word is, have God inside of you. Have the power. Put on that full armor of God. Walk in wisdom. Yeah. I can go back in my life and I say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that, and I wish I wouldn't have done this. And I think that happens to most people. We are at a time where you, you young people, you have to become more than what you are now. Because we are in a, we are what us as pastors teach as the end time age. Everything is coming against us. Satan is walking around through the world looking for who he can destroy. If he can make you sin, it pulls you away from God. If he can destroy you, well, it makes him very happy. <coughs> And I would say that pretty much now, in, in what we see around the world, in what we see happening, in what I see with some of the pictures that I just raised up and show you, uh, this is Manila. This is what goes on in Manila right now. Manila, and this says, well, Obama is okay with it, so it must be good. Well, President Putin of the Russia told Obama, he says, you're turning the world into a sewer. <laughs> and this isn't what we're showing here, this isn't putting any this isn't putting any any blame or we're not even opening the subject. But I'm telling you it's the appearance. I'm telling you in the United States they're now what really made everybody in mad United States, they're forcing it in our schools. And they're saying to the young people, it's okay to act like this. It's okay to do that. You now it's taken a percentage of a few and turn it into a whole mess to where this guy, and I'm holding, for the radio audience, I'm holding up a picture of Satan who's saying, I am very well pleased that you people 
you are doing a tremendous job of destroying yourself. This is what we've got to think. Okay, we got about four minutes. You got my final word? Don't do it. Who wants to give the next final word? Guys, what's your final word for the for our audience out there and what we've tried to make? What is your final word? Well, uh, <laughs> sa atong mga naminaw karon ng mga kabataan sa tanan nga uh, nagpamatay ng programa, ang uh, isa sa ito ang uh, hunahunaon, so labi na sa wala pa naka-start ni ining maong uh, social problem, no? kanya ito ang natawag na premarital sex, huwag sa nakasugod man ka, well, uh, let us look, no? kana bang, kung sabay imuhang himuon, no, uh, dili ibig sabihin na nakastart ka, imuhang nasigisigihon. But, let us think, no? isipon, ibutang sa itong muna-muna, nga kaning butanga adunay dakong epekto sa ato ang kinabuhi no isipon nato sa makadaghan nga kani siya usa ka dakong responsibility og uh, syempre well uh, kita no nagahimot og mga initiatives nga maka-intervene ni anang mga klase ng butanga well ang Ronel C. Rivera Foundations no uh, nagahatag og mga intervention sa mga activity alang sa mga kabataan para Uh, malayo nato no malayo nato sa kanang uh, klase-klaseng mga social uh, problem no labi, labi na sa ato ang city we have no a lot of uh, leadership seminar well uh, kailangan nato is leadership eh. why kasi for me uh, leadership is about controlling your emotion so if you have that leadership no ma-assure nato nga <clears throat> force you have the power to control over Amen. Amen. Do you girls have any final word? Um, for us, um, to avoid doing that PMS, what you need to instill in your mind is that you need to think, and everything that you are doing, you need to think that you're doing it for God, for you to avoid doing it. Because if you're thinking that you're do doing it for God, then you're gonna think that, I'm not going to do this because I love God and because God loved me. Amen. 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 Okay, let me let me let me say by thanking everybody today cuz we we got about two minutes left. Uh, this was uh, this is our partnership with the Renell Rivera Foundation. We're working to uh, you know, we're we're following what the mayor wants and trying to serve the city and trying to it's trying to make this a better place. We understand that it's got to take a higher authority. It's got to be God. We got to get back in control. The uh, girls from uh, this is this is our office here next to the uh, radio station, Emmanuel and Jinky Heart Foundation, our support system. Shane and I and and Philip is here. Thank you also, Philip. Philip's been very busy behind the scenes taking pictures, so so we can put this up on the uh, Facebook for you. So you'll be able to hear this program again. I'll. <laughs> I'll try to see if I can get a little faster and not have to work all night, but we'll get this up on the program. This is going to be part of many interesting series that's coming up. This, as you know, we're five days a week, so we're going to we're going to finish up the rest of this month with the other issues, and then we're going to get back. We'll have these guys are part of the foundation, the Rivera Foundation. Home. I can say uh, thank you all very much audience out there please tell your friends to join us we're going to start doing a lot more promotion uh, since we can finish this up this will be great did you guys have one last word gusto na akong pasalamat ng radio alerto o the heart foundation ang Pacquiao family so kay taga aming privilege nga maka pa share po din sa amo ang mga ideas o at the same time na po din nakatunan no kumbaga vice versa ang ato ang learning so uh, gusto po na akong ipaabot nga ugma day pohon uh, February 10 uh, sa naadto na kami pabayli sa barangay mabuhay uh, uh, ginaawag na mo tanan nga mga senior citizen din na uh, atong ibalik tong mga ang atong pagkaba ang atong kagahapon ang atong pagkabatan on so ang Ronald Rivera Foundation Incorporated uh, magkandak mi ug sa inyong barangay o kanang tawo nga tawo nga pabayli on uh, sports uh, buan uh, love month february okay uh, to god be the glory uh, and we and we we're looking forward to seeing you guys on here again 
and thank everybody here, uh, Sheena, you girls, you guys, a very tough subject, you did very good. To God be the glory, we'll see you all tomorrow.